Ryan from the Kitchen folks. Today I'm going to attempt to make a candy floss flavoured hard cider. So here are my key ingredients and today I'm keeping it simple. I'm using the turbo cider method of apple juice from concentrate. There'll be around about four litres of that going in there. This contains nothing but apple juice from concentrate. My flavouring is with simply candy floss flavour syrup and I'm hoping that this will give it a really lovely sweet candy floss flavour. I'm going to add a bit of yeast nutrient so the yeast has a bit more to feed on because there's not tons nutrient wise in there. My yeast of choice today is Valvin ICV D47 and I've got a couple of tea bags to add tannins to give it a bit of a cider bite. I'm going to begin by popping my tea bags into my pan and I'm going to make some apple tea using apple juice from concentrate rather than water. <clears throat> I'm trying to keep the water out of my ciders now if I can. I want it to have more body and more flavour and I think reducing the water is probably good for that. Okay so there's about a third of a litre gone into there. I get the heat on and I want this to come to a boil before I go into my next step. Let's have a look at that candy floss flavour syrup. So my candy floss flavour syrup is from Simply Syrups like I said. I'm just having a look at the ingredients. Sugar, water, glycerin, natural flavouring, salt, preservative E2O2, acid, citric acid and colour E163. So there is a preservative in there and there is a school of thought that says that the preservative might mean that the cider won't work. What usually happens is that the preservative slows down the yeast establishing so it takes a little bit longer to get going fermentation wise. What I'm going to do to try and break that preservative down is to boil it in the apple tea that I'm making once I take the tea bags out. I'm waiting for the apple tea to come to a boil so I can start to put the cider together. My fermentation vessel today is the good old humble one gallon 4.54 litres Demijohn or carboy to you Americans. So I'm going to put three and a bit litres of apple juice in here to start with. So this is the full one and this is the end of the one I had open. I do like a good squeeze. I do get people commenting saying why don't you stab the bottom of the carton but what's the point in rushing something that you enjoy? Who doesn't enjoy a good squeeze eh? Hey. Eh? Anyway, just while I'm having a good squeeze I need to ask you, have you subscribed to my YouTube channel yet? www.mosshomeandgarden.co.uk takes you to my YouTube channel. If you hit the red subscribe button and press the bell, that makes me so happy. And then you'll get all future updates. Most of my films, in, in all honesty, 90% of my films are homebrew related. The rest are a few cooking films, maybe the odd one from the garden. Okay, I'm not going to add any more to this at the minute because I obviously don't want to have too much liquid for the demijohn. So this has currently got three and a little bit litres of apple juice in there. I need to wait for the apple tea to come to a boil now. They say a watch pot never boils. And they were wrong. There we go. So I want this to simmer now for a couple of minutes before I take the tea bags out. Okay, these bags have been simmering away now for a couple of minutes and it really does smell like a Turkish apple tea. So I think it's now time to remove the bags. I'm going to do so with a slotted spoon so I can drain anything out and then I'm going to use the back of a dessert spoon to just squeeze them and get out any remaining flavour and goodness. The tannins are not really present in apple juice from concentrate. It's what you normally get in the skin of the fruit. And the tannins will not just give it like that cider bite, but it gives it a better mouthfeel, a bit more roundness. Okay, I think I can consider those squeezed. Anyway, the candy floss flavoured syrup, it's a one litre bottle. I'm going to attempt to get half of that in there. I don't want to put the full bottle in. But I definitely want it to have a good candy floss flavour. It's very thick and syrupy, as you expect a syrup to be. A bit more. That will do. 
So I'm just waiting for this to come up to a simmer again. I'll turn the heat down when it does and I want it to simmer for five minutes just to try and nullify any negative effects that the preservatives might have. I don't know if it's an old wives tale this or if it actually works, but I've been doing it and my sliders have been working. So if it's not broken, don't fix it. Okay, I'm gonna turn this off now and I'm gonna leave it to cool down for about 30 minutes before continuing with the recipe. Okay, it's been well over 30 minutes. The apple tea with candy floss syrup has cooled down nicely. I'm now gonna add some yeast nutrient into my demijohn as I start to put this together now. So I've got a teaspoon here and I'm gonna do a nice, generous, very heaped teaspoonful. Why not? So here's my tea. You know, the candy floss smell, it smells like, it smells a bit more like caramel or toffee. Interesting. Right, let's pour it in. So the candy floss colour has completely gone and the funnel will pour through in a sec when it melts through the nutrient. There we go. I love it when that happens. Boosh. So I've got one more litre of apple juice to add, but before I do that, I'm just going to start to stir this around because it's easier to mix it a little bit when the demijohn isn't too full. And then I'll pour that apple juice in as it's mixing round. I'm trying to get a consistent mixture so when I take the gravity, it'll be accurate. Let's get this in. Wash the funnel out with apple juice. I won't get the full litre in. And I'm going to overfill the demijohn. Don't worry, I don't worry. Uh, I'm going to pour some out to take the gravity. And then if it does blow through the airlock, then I'll just simply clean the airlock out and replace it. This is a clear liquid. There's no fruit matter in there, so it doesn't really matter. Worst case scenario when it does make a mess is that you can put a blow off pipe in. But I won't need to do that because it's not going to be an awful mess if it does come through the airlock. So this is now what I've got. And I'm just going to give it a bit more of a stir around. It's at room temperature. I did let the uh, tea cool down, so I'm not concerned about it being too warm to take the gravity, which is my next step. So in to the hydrometer tube goes 100 mil. And that now leaves me a little bit more headspace at the top. That'll be fine. Come back to that in a second. Let's get that hydrometer. Okay, let's get this in there. And I'm starting off with an original gravity of 1.076, 1076. So I'm dead curious as to what this tastes like, so a little nifter time. If you'd given me this blind and said what flavour is that, I would have said caramel. That's obviously boiling the candy floss flavour. Interesting. I wonder whether I should try and compare it by doing one where I don't boil it to see how it comes out flavour wise. It's very nice. So hopefully it will make a nice cider. Okay, so I'm going to add the Lalvin ICV D47 yeast. I've got a nice rounded heaps teaspoon. And I'm pretty sure that this yeast is going to have a jolly old time in there. Just giving it a little swish around. So this is work in progress and as I'm sort of working I'm thinking what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to do exactly what I've just suggested and use the rest of the candy floss syrup to make another cider identical to this one but I won't boil the other candy floss syrup and I'll test the results at the end. How about that? Exciting! Okay, so I've got the airlock in this one now. I've got the demijohn labelled up. So what I need to do now is to make the other candy floss cider without boiling the syrup. So I shall be back when I've done that. And there's the other one done too. Okay, so they're both now done. This is the original one, which was boiled. This one started on an original gravity of 1.076. This is the new one. This is don't boil. This one started on an original gravity of 1.058. Now there's a reason for that. 
I ran out of apple juice. So despite what I said in my previous film about no longer adding spring water into my ciders, I have had to add spring water into this one. I had no choice. So this one has got a litre of spring water in it, more than I would like, and it will mean that the flavour isn't the same, but it also means that there's less sugar in there. Still, I'm interested to see what's going to happen with the end result of this in terms of speed of fermentation, final ABV and all that sort of stuff. So the next film from me will be later on today or in the next 24 hours when fermentation begins and we'll look at which one starts fermenting first and when. Okay, catch you then. Well, it's been two hours and there's positive pressure in both airlocks. But the one that seems to be going ever so slightly more is the one that wasn't boiled but there really isn't very much in it at all so far. I'll take another look this evening. Okay so it's six hours later and now look at the difference on the left not boiled on the right boiled. Now also bear in mind the one on the right has got more sugar in it but there is definitely more of a Krausen on the one on the right than the one on the left although airlock activity in both of them is extremely slow and the next morning update and you can very clearly see now that the one where i've boiled the syrup is definitely well advanced to the one where i didn't boil it the airlock's popping a lot quicker and the krausen is much more formed now the one where i haven't boiled it it's still going to work and it still will happen it's just going to be maybe a couple of days behind this one. Anyway, I'll have a further progress update in a couple of days time. So the two day later update, not boiled on the left and boiled on the right. I think it's fair to say they're both pretty much racing away. The one on the right, definitely a bit more going on, but the one on the left's doing just fine. And I think these are gonna be good brews. So unless anything dramatic happens in the interim, the next film you see will be bottling. Catch you then. Good afternoon from the kitchen, folks. It's my least favourite part of the brewing process. It's big bottling day. Let's have a look at that candy floss cider. And here it is. And you know what? It's cleared absolutely lovely. It's been in the Demijohns for five weeks. And it fermented for probably about three and a half weeks. And then for the last week and a half, we're talking about one bubble through the airlock, maybe every minute, less than that, possibly. So, yeah, it's time to bottle it. OK, so I've got my bottles ready. Um, in each bottle, I'm going to add a bit of sugar. This is the equivalent of about one and a half teaspoonfuls. This is what I call priming sugar. And this is what will give the cider a bit of a sparkle. So when the yeast that's in suspension gets to this priming sugar, it starts a very fractional fermentation and a byproduct of that is CO2. The CO2 will build up inside the bottle, it will create pressure and that, fingers crossed, is what will give the end product a fizz. So then it's bung out, it's siphoning tube in. Let's do it. So the first bit that's come out is going into the hydrometer tube and it's come out very clear actually so that's a great sign and now I'm into the bottles. It smells very cidery, I'm not particularly getting the candy floss from the smell but let's see what happens. It's all in the taste. And into the second bottle. So the one I'm doing at the minute is the one that wasn't boiled, the not boiled one. It's not particularly a scientific experiment really because I did end up putting slightly different ingredients in them. But it's just to show that both have worked, um, both fermented just fine, both kind of finished fermenting at the same time. And we'll see what the final gravity settles on. So it's reacting nicely to the priming sugar, as you can see there. This will definitely be a sparkler. So 
So I'm not sure if I'll quite fill this bottle, we'll see. And there we go, bubbles in the siphoning tube. Moment of truth, once I've drained that into the bottle, and once I've emptied the hydrometer flask, maybe I'll be able to fill it. Let's see. Before I go any further, I want to take the final gravity of the no-boil. And that seems to have sank very nicely. Although there is still some residual sugar in there, interestingly. This has finished on 1.006, It's against my better judgment to do this because of the possibility of cross-contamination. But I am going to add it into this bottle. It won't quite fill it, so I might have to nick a bit out of the next one which was marginally fuller. So next I need to bung these before we get any uh, oxidisation. I've got my bungs softening in very hot water, which makes them malleable, they're plastic bungs. So I get my bung, I shake off the excess water, goes into the bottle and push one in. Now the bung will not stay in place without a cage because once that secondary fermentation takes place in here to create the sparkle, pressure builds up, pop. So cage as so cage pulls down over the top of the bung and then you twist and twist and twist and twist until you feel like it's tight and it's locked in place and that will not go anywhere now you don't need to see me bung and cage the rest of the bottles because that's just boring you've seen me do it once likewise you don't need to see me siphon the other demijohn because you've seen me do it once. So once I've got everything out of that demijohn and all the bottles bunged and caged, I'll get back to you. See you then. Right, let's see what the gravity of the boiled one is, the final gravity. And that seems to have sunk further. That's interesting. Although not dramatically, it's actually finished on 1.004. So this one's finished on 1.004. It's not really a scientific experiment, as I said before, because the ingredients were slightly different at the beginning with me adding water in one and not the other. But it just goes to show that they're finished in pretty much the same area. This one obviously has got a little bit less sugar in it than the other one. So I've got my no boil in the sink and my boil up here. It's time to give them a rinse off. I'm keeping them separate because I've got to label them separately with them having different ABVs. I'm just rinsing off any sticky residue which might be on the bottles. So it's time to work out those final alcohol by volumes or ABVs. I'll begin with the non-boiled, which started with an original gravity of 1.058. This ended on a final gravity of 1.006, so I deduct that from 1.058. That gives me a figure of 0.052. And then I multiply this by 131.25 and this gives me a final alcohol by volume of 6.8%, a perfectly respectable cider percentage. Now for the one where the cordial was boiled. This began on an original gravity of 1.076. I deduct from that the final gravity of 1.004, which equals... 0.072 and then I multiply this by 131.25 which is going to give me a rocket fuel 9.45%. Wow! So there's quite a significant difference between the two ABVs. It will be very interesting to see how this reflects in the flavour. Will I like the flavour of the stronger one or the weaker one? Who knows? We'll find out in about a month's time. Anyway, now I need to make the labels. So there are my labels in a very simple Microsoft Word template. It's just a case of printing these out. So I'm just labelling my bottles. Try and make them look a little bit nice, bit professional, bit consistent. It's all a bit slapdash amateur, really, but it's nice to do the best you can with what you've got. That's what I think anyway. I'll come back to you when I've done all of them. Oh, 
and here they all are, ready for conditioning. Okay, so the conditioning process is where the flavour develops and matures, but also where the sugar is split apart by the yeast in the bottle, fractional fermentation takes place, carbonation, pressure buildup, and all that sort of stuff. Okay, so that's what's going to happen over the next month. They're going to condition in my living room up here. So I've got them uh, dotted around on the top of this drinks cabinet. It's just in my living room, it's May and we'll be going into June. It's easily warm enough for this to condition. And another advantage that this location has is that inside the cabinet there is a light which comes on on an evening and it stays on for four or five hours and it makes the whole top shelf really warm. So the next film that you see from me will be in about a month's time when it comes to opening and tasting. Catch you then folks. Good evening from the kitchen folks. It's my candy floss cider grand opening night and yes I'm very excited about this one. I'm always excited about this one or these two. So if you remember I've got two different ABVs from slightly varying recipes. One boil one no boil. So I've got my stronger one here which was the boil at 9.45 percent and my weaker one here at 6.8 percent which was the no boil but it's not a scientific experiment because the recipe is varied as I've already stated. Anyway this has been conditioning for a month it's been in the fridge for 24 hours and I'm going to open them both now so we can get a comparison on carbonation and flavour at the same time. Oh it's exciting! Starting off with the boil so this one is a higher ABV does that mean that carbonation might be lower? That's an interesting sort of scenario because it could be that there's less active yeast left in there for it to carb. So am I going to get a pop? Oh, I'm going to get a saw hand. One second. Blue roll. What would we do without it? Right. Back to that age old question. Am I going to get a pop? <laughs> Pathetic. Okay. Now, there was a minutiae amount of vapour when I opened that. So there was something there in the way of carbonation, but Lord knows what. Let's have a look. Okay. And it's very clear to see that after one month, oh no, there is effervescence. Look, you can see bubbles in there. There is. So we can call this effervescent, not sparkling. Oh, it's very full bodied. It's got a nice flavour, actually. It tastes very apple-y. The candy floss flavour isn't obvious. In fact, it's almost got that slight taste of Western's cider. Yeah, I'm blowing my own trumpet by saying that, but I'm going to go out there on a limb and say that's a little bit what it tastes like. No, it's not definitely not an obvious candy floss taste. There's something there. It's medium. Is it medium to medium sweet or just medium? I think it's just medium. I'd call this a medium cider. It's very drinkable and at 9.45% it's dangerously very drinkable. So that's an interesting one. So the carbonation, I think that this one at the higher ABV needs another month to carb because it's definitely beginning to carb. You can see it's just not quite there yet, but flavour wise, it's spot on. It's very nice indeed. OK, so that's the stronger one. Let's have a look at the one which is uh, no boil and the cage is broken. Gosh, right. One sec. So the, the one with the weaker ABV has definitely carved because you can see that the bung has raised on top. So I'm absolutely certain that this is carved. So I need to take the cage off with a little bit of care because I don't want the bung to fly off like a missile. I'm going to need a bigger tool. 
a bigger tool. Right, be careful, Stuart. That's it. I just needed to prise it apart. So I'm going to very gingerly remove that cage because I don't want the bung to fly out in case it's tempted to. Right, am I going to get a pop with this one? Oh, back of the net. Right, that one were beautiful. Right, so this one at the lower ABV has carved nicely. Now that's interesting, isn't it? So there's definitely more yeast left in this one, which has helped the secondary fermentation inside the bottle to create the sparkle. So let's just look at the colour. So this one is a lot lighter than this one. So the weaker one is lighter, but there was water in the weaker one, remember. Right. Yeah, they both smell pretty much the same, to be quite honest. The weaker one is a medium sweet. Interestingly, the weaker one has retained some of the candy floss flavour. However, if you'd given this to me blind and said to me, what taste is that in the cider? I wouldn't have said candy floss, but I might have said caramel. That's, that's where it is, it's in that ballpark. It's nice, they're both nice ciders. They are subtly different in flavour and obviously quite a lot different in ABV. What's my favourite of the two? Try this one again. Okay. I'm going to say the stronger one. It's more full bodied, it's got a better mouthfeel and it's a nicer cider flavour. So, and obviously it's higher ABV, so winner, winner, chicken dinner. So I'm gonna have fun tonight, aren't I? So, yeah, so candy floss cider, it's worked in the sense that it's made good ciders, but the candy floss flavor isn't hugely obvious. In fact, it's not really there at all. So if you are thinking about making a candy floss flavored cider, I'd suggest you consider looking at other ways to flavor it. But these are nice, they're really good. I'm going to enjoy them without a shadow of a doubt. Right, I'm going to enjoy these folks. So cheers, and I'll catch you on the next brew. I'll take you to the candy floss. The film that you've just watched is a Moss Home and Garden production. You can find more by going to www dot mosshomeandgarden.co.uk I'd just like to say thank you very much for supporting my YouTube channel and for watching my films it really is very much appreciated if you haven't already done so please subscribe to my YouTube channel in order to receive future updates about the home and garden films which I upload you can find my YouTube channel by going to www.mosshomeandgarden.co.uk please click on the red subscribe button when you've done that a little bell will appear if you press that also, then you'll get future updates about the films which I upload. If you like my films, if you like my style of filming, then you might also like my travel channel, which you will find by going to youtube.com forward slash Stuart Moss or typing www.mosstravel.tv. Again, if you could subscribe to that channel, it would be hugely appreciated. If you'd like to get Moss Home and Garden updates on Facebook, then please open Facebook and do a search for Moss Home and Garden and you will find the page. If you like the page, then you will get future updates on there. And if you'd like to connect on Instagram for home, garden and travel photography, as well as some stories, then my username is Stu Moss, S-T-U-M-O-S-S. If you'd like to connect on Twitter, then my username is at Stuart Moss. And if you'd like to contact me about film usage or any other issue, please just email me on stewmosshomegarden at gmail.com. Once again, thank you very much for supporting my channel, for watching my films. I do appreciate it. I'd just like you all to have a great day.